Hello friends, Frequently Gets in Fights with Hobos Over Pizza Crust here, bringing you another Dota 2 video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about why in current Dota 2, TI3 Alliance could not win a TI in the same way that they did in 2013. Why? Because split pushing is dead. Its body was cremated, and its ashes were thrown into the deepest parts of the Mariana Trench. At this point, you're probably wondering, and rightly so, how is this possible? The reason this is possible is because, now more than ever, people are extremely good at abusing some of the core game mechanics such that they never have to leave an area unless they absolutely want to. Most importantly, you never really have to leave the enemy triangle if you have a lead in a game of Dota. And in a couple of minutes, I'll show you exactly what you can do to stay in the enemy triangle while you're ahead. But first, let's talk about why you would even want to play in the enemy triangle in the first place. In order to best illustrate how efficient it is to take over the enemy triangle, let's consider all four quadrants of the map. First, we have our triangle. This is the safest area on the map to farm. Why is this? Because there are many high grounds, and even double high grounds, leading up to a very small area with fantastic ward spots. On top of this, your middle lane and off lane towers are very close to each other compared to the safe lane towers, which means there are plenty of TP locations for your teammates to TP to, hence why it's so safe. Basically, your triangle is the Fort Knox of jungles. Next up on the list, we have our very own jungle. This area is relatively safe, just like our triangle, but it's a lot larger and therefore a lot harder to defend. However, there are still tons of towers nearby to TP2, and also some high grounds that make the area pretty damn difficult to penetrate for the enemies. Also, of course, it is worth noting that there are way more jungle camps to farm in our own jungle versus the triangle. After that, we have the enemy jungle. In coaching, I usually tell people that if they don't know where to be on the map, the answer is the enemy jungle. This is similar to our own jungle, but instead of towers, we have an outpost. However, the biggest benefit to the enemy jungle is that it's right in front of the enemy base. So, if you kill the enemies there, you'll already be knocking at their front door, and so therefore you'll get some free towers. If you die here, then you'll respawn by the time they're knocking at your front door. And finally, we get to the enemy triangle. This place, like I mentioned before, is the enemy team's Fort Knox, the last beacon of hope that they have in a losing game. If you take this area over, then the enemy team has an incredibly small and downright awful list of options to choose from. Option number one, they can farm on your side of the map, but this requires them to somehow make it past you without dying, and even if they do that, then they have to constantly be concerned about people TPing back to kill them. Option number two, they can farm in their jungle, but similarly, they risk a few people TPing to the outpost, and then everybody else moving over from the triangle to pincer them. Option number three, they sit in their base, and they wait. On that note, I frequently get asked the question, Jenkins, when do I go high ground? It feels like my team always throws going high ground. And my answer to that is, never. Don't go high ground. Stop trying to go high ground, and you'll stop throwing games. The best way to win Dota for the last one to two years has been War of Attrition. High-rated pubs have adopted this strategy, but low-rated pubs have not. So, if you can do this in your games, you will be doing something very, very important that nobody does all the way up until High Immortal Bracket, which is incredibly game-winning. That is, Every single game, scream at your team to stand in the goddamn enemy triangle and wait for the enemies to engage their basic animalistic instincts, get bored, desperately want to hit creeps to hear that cha-ching sound, and then they'll walk up to you and feed. Okay, so now that we all agree that holding the enemy triangle is by far the most effective way to turn a lead into a win, let's take a look at exactly how to do it. Step 1. Purchase a Smoke of Deceit, an Observer Ward, and a Sentry Ward. Step 2. Press Smoke and go murder somebody. Whenever somebody dies, this will put the enemy team into a defense mode, and this is exactly what you're going to abuse to make the enemy team run away from their triangle instead of killing you the moment that you walk up. Step 3. 
make your way to their triangle immediately after you get the kill. It's very important that in these moments, you do not hit a single jungle camp. This is exactly what pros mean when they refer to people playing fast Dota. You don't have a huge window of time where the enemy team is in this defense mode just because death timers aren't that long, and it's also a long walk to the enemy triangle. So one jungle camp can often be the difference between making it there before they're alive and not. Step 4. Place your observer and sentry wards on a high ground and get as many heroes as possible to stand on the high grounds waiting for the enemy team to walk up. During this time, you want some of your people to be jungling in the nearby area because, of course, you don't want to just be doing this without farming with some other people just waiting patiently for the enemy team to walk up and die. You can also have some fast hero playing far away from where you are, and, of course, you're going to get more farm that way, but this is usually the job for a hero like Queen of Pain, Ember Spirit, or Storm Spirit because these heroes can quickly make their way to a fight if it does erupt. Step 5. And I cannot stress how absolutely crucial this step is, since this is basically the only reason that this strategy has dominated the game. You need to have two heroes aggroing the middle and side lane wave adjacent to the jungle. One of the biggest mistakes that I see in low-rated pubs is that they have the opportunity to take over the enemy triangle, but they don't because somebody TPs away to deal with the creep wave that is in front of their base. This is old fashioned. If you do this, you are a Dota boomer. Do not be a boomer. Cut the waves properly and wait for the creeps to eventually make their way to the enemy base while you are still holding that triangle. The glory of this strategy, among other glories, is that if you're cutting two lanes of creeps, then it means that the enemy team can only be split pushing in one lane. And that's just not a threat, because two towers for one tower, or two lanes of racks for one lane of racks, is never a good trade. The final, and honestly most fun step in this strategy, is that you need to condition the enemy team psychologically to be scared and to not leave their base. You cannot just sit in the triangle twiddling your thumbs if they disrespect you and walk into their own jungle to farm. You have to kill them. Remember how the first step of this strategy is to kill an enemy hero? Well, that's because step 6 is just step 1. Taking over the enemy triangle is a cycle, and this is exactly how high level Dota is played currently. If the enemy team leaves their base, you have to smoke to kill them or you do some creative TP with a ganking hero and you set up to kill the enemy team. Then you use that death timer to make your way back to their triangle and the cycle repeats. You rinse and repeat this until you have a massive gold lead and leaving the base gets harder and harder for the enemy team. And this, my friends, is exactly why split pushing as a central strategy is long dead. Against this triangle taking, creep cutting, ward defending strategy, split pushing will not exert any serious amount of pressure, and it will just lead to you slowly but surely getting starved until you die a very slow, very painful death.